Hello again, fine folks of the internet. Welcome to Small Fantasy Football. I'm your host, Dave. This week, we're diving into week eight. And in today's quick video, we're going to go over some waiver wire additions that just make sense. And we're going to touch base on a couple of sleeper options at each position that you may be able to plug in and help you steal a W this week. So here we go. All right, so welcome back to another episode. Uh, today's episode, again, we're going to jump into some waiver wire and some sleeper options as we normally do on Tuesday. It is waiver wire Tuesday, of course. So I'm going to hope you get this out in time that you can take a peek at this video and, of course, dive in and grab the guys you need to get. Or do what a lot of people do nowadays. Most of the people out there are just not paying any attention anymore. So Wednesday rolls around and you don't even have to worry. You don't have to stress. You don't have to bid. Those guys are just sitting there just chilling. Or you can always go in and sneak guys that people have dropped too. So keep that in mind. So at each position, what I'm going to do here for the waiver wires is I'm going to go over a, a, an individual at each position that you're going to have to cough up some fab for or blow your priority on going forward. Um, so we'll start ahead with the quarterback position. Normally I would do one per position, but today I'm going to give you guys two. So we'll jump in with Carson Wentz. Now guys, if Wentz is kicking on your waiver wire, please go and get him. It pains me to say it as I've never been a huge fan of this man that's made of glass, uh, but he only has two picks this year somehow, and both were pretty boneheaded plays in the red zone with him shuffle passing forward as he was like going down to the ground. Kind of weird how they both were in the same situation, but he's been putting up super serviceable numbers in fantasy. Besides week three, which happened to be at Tennessee as, as well, uh, he hasn't put up less than 17 and a half points. That's, a six, that's six games with great numbers. He is quarterback number 13 on the year right now, and he's got a healthier version of T.Y. Hilton coming his way as well. So look out for Carson Wentz. Up next, can't believe it, but it's Joe Flacco of the New York Jets. So Joe Flacco just got traded to the New York Jets from the Philadelphia Eagles on Monday, and this is due to Zach Wilson's knee injury. Now, for those of you that didn't see the injury, um, he got hit pretty violently along the sideline, uh, and he kind of rolled over his knee and made it look like rubber. It didn't look great. But he seemed to be fine. He got up, got to the line of scrimmage, snapped the ball, made a pass the next play. But he got shoved from behind on that next on that second play, and he went down again, and that was it. He uh, he he was not able to get up. So it's a PCL sprain. He's going to be out for two to four weeks. So <laughs> fire up Super Bowl Joe, man, Super Bowl MVP Joe Flacco. Uh, now he may not be a great option, but for those of you in a two quarterback or super flex league, you know how major a quarterback injury can be to your lineup. Mike White came in, who was backing up Zach Wilson, and he did what he could. But this is going to be like this is going to be Joe Flacco's offense going forward, which is crazy. At the running back position, Brandon Bolden, running back for the New England Patriots. They are at the LA Chargers this week. The Patriots are back to their old muddied backfield ways. We've got Damian Harris, who hopefully that's the guy that you have ownership of and out of those three. You have Ramondre Stevenson, the rookie with promise, and then you have Brandon Bolden. It feels like he's been there for like 48 years, but you know it may have been the absolute ass-whooping that the Jets received from the Patriots that caused the game script, but Bolden put up 17 fantasy points last week. He's the new James White. He, he rushed the ball two times, um, but he caught six of seven passes for 67 yards and a touchdown. So James White is out going forward. So that's where Bolden has now stepped up his spot. And, you know, I, I think that if things trend the way they will or the way they have in the past, the Patriots, which I do believe they shall, um, this guy should be an absolute unit for uh, PPR leagues. At the RB position number two, Mr. Kenneth Gainwell. Juicy matchup this week at the Lions. Now, the, the Eagles are only favored by a field goal, so this should be a good game. Sorry, it's probably going to be an awful game. It's, it's going to be a tight game. Um, so, <laughs> that being said, you know, the game script is there. He has, he has some lower rushing yards, but he caught, he had eight targets last week against the Raiders. That's a lot of targets for running back. And Jalen Hurts doesn't look super confident and has been really relying on Gainwell for these quick dump-offs, and I don't see that going away anytime soon. The big part here, obviously, is that Miles Sanders exited the Raiders game on Sunday with an ankle injury. That bumps Gainwell's usage up. 
That being said, you may want to also look for Boston Scott, who's probably more like more likely to be available on the waiver right now. Um, if Daniel's already been scooped up, um, he'll be sharing reps with Gainwell going forward until Miles Sanders can get back out on the field. At the wide receiver position, we have Darius Slayton. This one doesn't feel good. I can tell you that for free. However, Slayton was out for weeks four through six, and he made his return last week uh, against the Panthers. And in his debut, he caught four of a whopping nine targets um, that came from Daniel Jones. Um, 63 yards, and uh, that was a big-time win for them against Carolina. Kenny Galladay is out, Kadarius Toney is out, and Sterling Shepard is out. Are all Sorry, they're all possibly out and leaning towards being out. Their game time decision for um, Kadarius Toney, he, I, I think out of the three of them, he'd be the most likely to play. But until we know for sure this guy, Darius Slayton, he's a must-own. You may also want to look at Dennis Pitta as an option if your things are really looking tight for you. Um, but this is a matchup against the Chiefs, which is an amazing week to start these kind of guys. Uh, and they should be available in most of your leagues. Second position, Russell Gage for the wide receiver position. This is Atlanta Falcons at the Carolina Panthers division game. Last week, Gage caught four of six targets for 67 yards and a touchdown. He seems like he's back and he seems like he is healthy as he can be right now. He was sidelined from weeks three till seven. Now week seven being a bye week, he hadn't played for that time frame, but it gave him a lot of time to rest up. And him coming back, he made a splash. Hopefully you were able to snag him last week on his bye week if you saw that he was available. Um, he's probably a little tougher to grab at this point. But if he's still there, go get him. Because Atlanta's offense does seem to be clicking a lot more than it has been in the past. Um, and defense is having to cover Calvin Ridley now that he's back. Uh, and, you know, that massive, massive tight end rookie, Kyle Pitts, man. That guy is putting up astronomical numbers for a rookie. I expect Gage to be able to, to um, capitalize on those situations of him being open. And I think he's going to be a solid wide receiver, too, for Matty Ice down the road. Now, at the tight end position, I am diving deep, so get your shovels out, okay? Uh, I'm not here to say, you know, you should probably go out there and start uh, DJ Hawkins. No, no, no. Today, we're talking about Tyler Croft. I know. Again, back to Joe Flacco. So Tyler Croft is a New York Jet. They're playing the Bengals. Joe Flacco may have the most passing yards to a tight end against the Bengals in this history of the sport. Uh, Flacco, again, was traded over to the Jets, uh, as I mentioned earlier. And this guy absolutely relies on his tight ends way more than the average Joe. See what I just did there? The Ravens, as Joe used to play for, they've always had a phenomenal tight end option. Um, and in terms of fantasy, that position actually eclipses the wide receiver position for the Ravens while Joe was there. And he was a big part of that, obviously. Um, Croft is coming off an injury, and he should play this week. If he is not in, I'd say go grab him anyways in real deeper leagues um, if, if you need him. Because he's going to have some targets coming his way. Now, don't get me the wrong. Uh, don't get me the wrong. Don't get me wrong. The Jets won't be very relevant on the field but there will be some points to be had in fantasy land and then my last waiver wire grab is foster moreau of the las vegas raiders he's on a bye week this week but this one is more or less strictly for those darren waller owners out there if you didn't have someone that you could just plug in last week when you found out pretty late into the afternoon that uh, waller was a no-go for that game you might have it might have cost you a loss that week, and that's a no go. You need to be ready for that kind of stuff. Moreau looked really good out there. Carr isn't gonna stop throwing to his big target tight ends. It's what he's used to. It's what when Waller's there, he's the target number one. So he's used to these plays that are designed for him. He's used to the you know reading his progressions in that in that uh, order. If Moreau's open, he's gonna get him. And Moreau looked good, man. And and Carr looks like he's playing out of his mind. Moreau, listen to this. Moreau is on the field. For 100% of the snaps. That's every single snap, in case you didn't know. That's wild. That's very rare. He caught six of six targets. He put up 60 yards. And he scored six with a touchdown. That's about as solid as it gets for a tight end. Now, Waller may be back after the bye week. But he may not be. If he's still injured, still hurting, so it needs some time to recover. The Raiders know they have a solid backup tight end. And they're going to be confident to sit Waller in the meantime. So... Go pick this guy up. That's all there is to it. 
So that's it for my wave of water graphs. Um, in the next section here, we're going to talk a little bit about my small sleepers. Now, in this category of fantasy, I'm going to do my best to help uncover some you know, great calls for the sleeper category. These are players that you may find on your waiver wire still. You may have them stashed on your bench that I think that you could probably plug in and flex them as a candidate to start. If you've got injuries to your stud starters, if you're looking for a, a, a bye week filler, or you're just trying to get that leg up on the competition, these might be a couple guys I think you can start that uh, will help turn the tide and get you a W. So starting again at the quarterback position, we have none other than Daniel Jones. Let me pull that right up. Uh, there he is. Thanks, Daniel. Thanks for coming back. Daniel Jones is at Kansas City. And Kansas City, all of a sudden, they just they suck. I don't, their defense specifically sucks. Only the Washington football team has given up more points to the quarterback than the Kansas City Chiefs. I don't know what's going on. Do I think Daniel Jones is a great, uh, great quarterback? No. Do I like the fact that he might have only one starting healthy wide receiver? No. But that being said, I do believe he's going to outscore his projected fantasy points of 18 this week. So if you have Lamar Jackson or Derek Carr behind center, or you need to flex a quarterback in a two quarterback or a super flex league, Jones could really be a good play this week. Moving on to the running back position. Everyone's favorite anime loving man, Jamal Williams of the Lions. They are hosting the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, I can't back the Eagles anymore. I just can't do it. Uh, I've been doing it, and they've been letting me down. The defense has been playing, you know, middle of the pack all year. They can't seem to win games that are definitely within reach, and, and they're hurt, too. All these things lead me to believe that Detroit will have their second game in a row with an offensive snap while leading. Yes, last week against the Rams gave me some hope for this team. To sneak in at least one, maybe two wins this year. And today, or sorry, not today, this week, it might be that week. So, to do so, I think that they'll need to use their best weapons, which is their two-headed running back committee of DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams. And he's only projected seven points. I just don't think that's doing him justice this week. Um, not against a, a not-so-great football team in Philadelphia. Again, this is supposed to be a tight game. It may not be a good game, but honestly, the Lions have been out there fighting um they got a lot of heart so i'll give them that and maybe they can sneak out a win this uh this week against the the philadelphia eagles at the wide receiver position i can't believe this though randall cobb fire him up guys let's go aaron Rodgers. we don't know for certain but he may not have Devonte adams or alan lazard this week because of covid19 that that being said they may Take some tests before Thursday, and they may pass. But as of right now, no go. When they found out that Adams was possibly missing for Thursday's game, the spread changed by six points. That's unheard of. He's just that freaking amazing. Now, as a fan of football, this sucks, knowing what could have been in that beautiful matchup between the Cardinals and the Packers, that NFC clash of Titans. But that being said, Cobb is... It's going to go out there and he's going to ball. Aaron Rodgers hasn't played bad without Devonta Adams. That's another crazy part about it. He's always good even without him. And having Lazard out as well opens the door for Randall Cobb this game. Marquise Valdez-Scantling, uh, if you see him on the waivers, maybe grab him this week too. He should be. He should have a game as well. Um, but I'm going to go with Rodgers' favorite target throughout the last you know multitude of years here. Um Cobb has projected nine points, which is a little higher than my normal sleeper option. But this is a specific case that just that had to be talked about. Okay, my last player I want to talk about today with you guys is tight end Tyler Higby of the LA Rams, and he is at the Houston Texans. Man, the Texans are bad against the tight end position. The Ravens and the Chargers are the only two teams in the NFL that are giving up more points to the tight ends than the Texans. Matt Stafford didn't exactly light up the Lions like everyone thought he was going to last week, but I expect that he'll be coming to beat up the Houston Texans team this week. He has so many amazing options around him to choose from. Lots of weapons, Cup and Woods and Henderson. But he's incredible at reading his progressions uh, and seeing the field. You know, he's been doing it for years. So when he sees that Higby is wide open because the Texans just don't know how to handle tight ends, he is going to sling it his way. 
Higby is projected 10 points, but again, I can't see him not getting a touchdown or two and having himself a massive game. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. That'll do it, sports fans. As I like to say, that'll do it, sports fans. Thanks for turning into another episode of Small Fantasy Football. I'm your host, Dave. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did, please leave a thumbs up as it really does help support the channel. And if you want to follow along to hear my NFL stories and spreads slash Moneyline bets each week, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when I post the next video. Thanks again. I'm out.